the Rock Sinag 98 is Rock's second take on the Sinag lineup, previously accompanied by the Rock Sinag TKL, which brought Psy Glow and was actually one of the boards I wanted way back when I was starting. For my international viewers, Rock is a fairly well-known brand here in the Philippines that made rounds when they first launched the Rock Lamang Lite and Lamang Pro. Think of this one as a culmination of what Rock learned throughout the years and them stepping up the game against the competition. Is the Rock Sinag 98 worth looking at? Let's find out! Disclaimer, Rock sent this early unit for review but that will not hinder my opinions on this board. As always, Rock is watching this video at the same time as you do. Printed on the box is an outline of the Rock Sinag 98 with some features of it, including the tri-mode compatibility, it having screw-in stabs, as well as a gasket mounting system, but more on that later. Opening the box, we are first greeted with the bare-bones keyboard itself wrapped in some diffuse plastic. Next to that is the user guide and manual for the Sinag 98. Opening the small compartment, we see the included keycap and switch puller combo as well as a braided USB Type-C cable. Removing the plastic cover, we see the Roxy nag out of the box, with the screw and stabs, the plate, and the board fully assembled. You only need to add switches and caps for the board to be used. Moving on, in the front we see the 1800 layout, and if you want a deeper dive on this, I have an explanation of the origins of this layout linked up above. But in summary, the 1800 layout ditches the middle row of navigation keys and moves it to the top alongside the F row. This makes the arrow keys and number pad closer to the alphanumeric side of the keyboard. The main advantage of this layout is that you can have more mouse space compared to your typical 108 key. This is comparable to the size of a TKL with the added functionality of a numpad on the right. Oh, and don't forget the metal knob on top that serves as the volume control as well as the mute button for your computer. I heard that it can also be repurposed as another key as well, if the user wishes. No soldering is required. Going on with the case proper, the board I got from Rack is made out of ABS plastic, which didn't exhibit any creaks or marks during my inspection, but I heard they'll be having a polycarbonate case for this as well. For this one built, I weighed it at 1 kilograms, fairly light and easy to maneuver, all things considered. On the front, we could see the aforementioned 1800 layout as well as the indicator keys in the middle, showing the num lock, caps lock, and windows lock in white. The topmost part of the numpad has by default the delete, insert, page up, and page down keys, but you can remap this on their software. More on that in a bit. The front height is about 20mm and it extends to 30mm on the rear. Nothing special on the sides, but you could visibly see the two-piece design of the board. On the rear, we could see the Type-C port placed in the center, as well as a silver rock logo on the far right side. On the back, we could see the two-stage rubber feet for you to be able to change the angle of typing. Next to that is the 2.4 GHz dongle which easily segues us to the standout feature of this board, as it is tri-mode with Bluetooth, wired, as well as the aforementioned dongle. And as for my testing, there is not much perceived lag in using this board on any modes, but I still advise you to either use the dongle or wired mode for some serious gaming. A huge con back in the Lamang era was its 3-pin north-facing PCB, often interfering with chair proper keycaps. And with Rock's latest release, they seemed to listen to the community and added in a pipe-in south-facing PCB with perky RGB to boot. Still no BIA or QMK compatibility though like the Haribon, but I'll quickly tour you with the software. You can download the Rock Sinag software through Rock's website. In the app, you could be able to remap the keys to any other key you desire. This is also not limited to one layer, as you have two more to customize from. You could also change the lighting modes on this, if you wish. And here is a quick test of that. Don't forget, you could also change this through the keyboard itself without the software.
And finally, is that you could be able to modify this, even the music visualization, on 2.4 GHz. Moving on from the software, the PCB also supports screw-in stabs, which are included out of the box. It also seems to have a rubbery PE foam-like material in between, to be able to aid the sound. The plate, that originally comes with this keyboard, is a polycarbonate one, aided with some silicone as a means of plate foam. There is also some thick silicone inside, alongside the 5000mAh battery. So out of the box, the board doesn't sound hollow at all. Maybe a bit deeper sounding, if you will, as the included silicone mutes the sound. If you're not a fan of the plate material, I'm sure local vendors can make their own. But as stock, expect this board to be able to talk out of the box. The stock gold-plated screw-in stabs weren't looped, which is a bummer. Hopefully by their next revision, they looped it a bit, as in order to be able to tune them, you need to disassemble the whole board, unlike plate mount stabs. As per the mounting style, it's a gasket-mounted keyboard with silicone tabs inside to be able to isolate the PCB and plate from the bottom case. Not much flexing happening here, but I bet if you remove the silicone dampener, as well as the silicone between the plate and PCB, it'll flex a bit. The gasket mount acts like a sound isolation for the switches and PCB, for it not to sound very teeny or pingy out of the box. On to the build proper. In order for you to check its stock and modded performance, I built this board three times, with the same switches and caps for each build. The switches I'll be using are some Gatteron Oil Kings, looped and filmed by channel sponsor Kurt Bro Switches. Use Kurt Z Tech to be able to get a 5% off discount in their shop. For the space bar, I opted for a black cherry pie as Franken switching them is expensive. For the rest of the keys, I just added some Gatron KS3s. The keycaps are some PBTCon Momo sets I had since my second keyboard. And with that out of the way, enjoy the stock sound test. Stock sound test sounds alright on the Alpas. No pinging or tinnitus was heard. This is due to large in part because of the silicone as well as the polycarbonate plate. The board overall sounds muted in a good way. It still retained the sounds of the Oil Kings but on the quieter spectrum. Stabs were bad stock to say the least as it rattled a bunch when I pressed them. Opening the board was quite hard as it used clips and tabs rather than using screws. But other than that, here is the second sound test with stabs tube and you tell me the difference. Just lubing the stabs made it so much better. I hope Rock considers this for their users. Lastly, I added two layers of tape mod on this case to be able to aid out the sound. And this is the final build.
I love how the tape mod elevated the sound a bit more. And I love how the Oil Kings complement that. If you want any other switches on this board, let me know below and I'll try to compile the sound test in the upcoming weeks. After 2 weeks of using this back and forth for my editing sessions, as well as gaming, I've grown fond of missing the numpad, being able to quickly rank through my photo edits as well as moving city skylines has made me love the numpad back. And in those 2 weeks, I have never felt any disconnection issues, nor did my 5000mAh battery easily deplete using the 2.4GHz dongle most of the time. And don't forget the RGB fully on. Rack knocked it out of the park on this one, and for $34.99, it's such a nice deal to get, especially this Christmas season. I wish it had BIA support, though I don't think you can do that with a tri-mode board. And I wish the stabs were pre-lubed out of the box, but I think it's an alright compromise for what you're getting. Not to mention a clean and one-year warranty from them. My suggestion with Rack is to be able to operate this pre-lubed with their own switches at a discounted price, for it to be more aggressive with the ACO boards roaming around data blitz. But other than that, it's a huge step up coming from the Rack EVs, Rack Sinag OG, and the Rack Lamang Pro. Hopefully Rack continues with the series in a revised TKL as I'd love to review one of those in the future. But anyways, that's it for now. Let me know what you think of this board down in the comment section below. I'm Johan J. Minwaba, and I'll see you in the next video.